Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. And with me tonight will be Zelric42 and Stasa23. Uh, tonight we will be talking about uh, new knife drops. We'll be talking about new knives in our collections, tidbits, this and that. But of course, we'll be talking about whatever you bring up, because that's what this is all about. This is about talking about knives. So... Jim, can anyone hear me? Is anyone out there? Am I all alone? Am I whispering in the woods? Am I crying out into the darkness? Well, now I'm looking at myself. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, good. Well, I was looking at myself and, and hearing myself and wondering if you could hear me. So I'm assuming all is good. Is all good, Jim? Why don't you, why don't you throw me up a little sign? Yes. All right, nice. Okay. Well, as I was saying, I don't even know what I was saying. Hello, Alex. Nice to have you here. Uh, I was going to. I, I do want to drop, uh, jump into some knife drops real quick before, before the gent, uh, the gents show up. That Zelric forty two and Stasa twenty three. Uh, but first, I want to let you know. I, I know you've been thinking about this all week. Um, hey, Krav. Good to see you, sir. Uh, I know you too have been wondering all week what was going on with my Voyager Chris drama. Well, let me assure you that drama is over. Uh, I, our, our good buddy Stu from uh, Stone and Steel up in Vermont, who has hooked me up with a number of sweet knives, um, heard my whole drama, heard heard my my tale of woe uh, on the podcast uh, with with Knife Center and and, and such. And he said, hey, uh, Stone and Steel has one of those laying around. Uh, can I send it to you for a fraction of the price? Well, it wasn't a fraction of the price, but it was a good price. And uh, he did. And it came. And it's so beautiful. This thing is really cool to have around. Let me just say, if you think it's a big, ridiculous knife, you could be right. But it is just a cool knife to have around. Maybe it's your desk knife. Maybe it's it's there to, you know menace people who approach your desk uh i have put the the uh 
Snaggletooth MF on mine so that uh, I am not caught flat-footed. And uh, this will open up automatically as I draw it from my pocket. Speaking of uh, Snaggletooth Tactical and Rob Penna. the head proprietor over there. He sent me one of their new, they're doing aluminum, um, aluminum Snaggletooth MFs. And he sent me a pink one to put on my pink uh, uh, broken skull, the one that I like to keep uh, in my waistband. And uh, it's awesome. I, I, I thought kind of early on, I thought uh, hopefully they move on to aluminum and I'm, I'm glad they did. I, I just, I love aluminum. Uh, it's coated, not anodized, and it's pretty thick. I mean, I don't, if it wears or when it wears, it's going to wear nicely. Um, so the pink pretty much matches. And the reason I say pretty much is that this G10 is hopelessly stained. Uh, I want to take it back to the innocent, pristine pink that it was when I first picked it up. Uh, but... I fear that's not going to happen. Uh, however, I've found that uh, when you when you go to places that sell cold steel, even cold steel, uh, you find the pink version of this knife for uh, much cheaper than every other cool, more macho uh, coloration. So uh, check out the new uh, Snaggletooth uh, MFs. Uh, actually, the aluminum ones are not out yet. They also have a smaller size coming out for the... Um, mini bug out and the rat one and the smaller knives so anyway cool little piece of kit hey zell how's it going well hello bob how you doing i'm doing great it's good to see you sir good to see you too how have these uh past couple of weeks treated you oh well as good as can be expected been having fun with the gladiator and uh working on knife stuff of course cool wait what's oh the gladiator your uh your vehicle yeah <laughs> sweet so uh, uh, I, I was just letting everyone know that that my Chris dilemma is over. And uh, one of our loyal listeners, Stu, sent me one from his company, uh, Stone and Steel. And I'm very happy to have, you know, both the heavy duty Chris and then the light duty Chris at, at my <laughs> at my beck and call, <laughs> you know. Oh, the Chris's. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get caught without it because that could be dangerous. It could, sure. So, what's new with you? What do you, you have? Anything? Uh, what What were you carrying in your in your pocket today? Today, yeah. well, oh well, it's always one of these. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, today like the I showdown, had, huh? The showdown. No, yeah, the showdown. Yeah, and Ooh. had this little guy. Oh, uh, that's a sweet. Is that the one you tempted me with uh, via text not too long ago? Yes. 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 That is a beautiful, uh, beautiful little knife. Yeah, it's a little PT. It's, uh, I don't know, I like that one. It's one of the, I guess what you'd call a an after or a news strider. Uh, right. Th since the kerfluffle. Yeah, since the breakup. Yeah. Since the breakup and reformation. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about was this uh, kite fin. Hey, Patty, good to see you, sir. It's great to see you. Wait, actually, before I get into that, uh, can you please bring up that smart ass comment that uh, Alex sent my wife someone about my underwear and the pink pink knife? Perkins. Where is it? <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So that is a, a little view into my mind. Uh, <laughs> in any case, the the kite fin. Are you familiar with this new Wii? Uh, I should be. I gave it its name. You gave it its name. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So tell me, what is a kite fin? First of all, it is a type of shark. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'd have to Google it up to show you a picture, but uh, you know, I name a lot of the wee knives, and I got to dig deep sometimes. But this one was fairly easy. Kite fin. So is is the uh, what what's the species? Uh, what's the kite fin species? What's the interesting thing about that one? Oh, well, they're fins, of course. We'll have to have our engineer guy get us a picture. Jim, Jim, if you can find a kite fin, well, there's the there's the there's knife. the knife. Uh, maybe you can find a kite fin shark in the next few minutes. That, that uh, but so tell me what. 
Zell, what is the uh, what is the purpose behind this knife? This seems to be audaciously EDC with its three point two five inch uh, blade. It's very much EDC. Uh, I haven't had one in hand yet. I've had seen pictures of it for the past few months and drawings and that, but uh, had haven't won't have one in hand for another week or so. Uh, the blade of this is beautiful. The the long so it's a it's a long slender shark like drop point, and it has this beautiful swedge on top that runs the near length of it, and it reminds me of the blade on the new um, the new Civivi, the large new Civivi. I can't remember the name. It's got an interesting name. Uh, uh, as, that's huh. As something as sticks. Oh no, that one's not my fault. Don't anyone blame oh. me for that name. <laughs> All right, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know how to say it either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, thank you, Jim. Look at Let's that. See, you know, I love Jim. That's so cool. I've never met him, but you're a hell of a guy. Jim's our Jamie. That's beautiful, <laughs> man. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. And, kite fin shark so what's what's the concept behind the handle of this uh of this knife uh you know i'm not exactly sure i was not in on the design phase of it uh whenever i deal with a wee a wee factory design whenever it gets to me if i have anything to do with it uh i get a simple like a 2d drawing hmm. and pictures of okay. prototypes and uh, I really think, though, what they were going for, and I haven't seen the pricing on it yet, but was a simple EDC, something with an ice drop point. It's got a standard, a titanium version of the clip that they use on the, uh, oh, the Civivi knives. <clears throat> okay. The, the and, loop, uh, loop over. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. A similar to that clip, except it's titanium, of course. Mm -hmm. And it uh, looks like they're going to do some interesting flaming on, and coloring on the clips and s several different handles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what it says here. Uh, titanium scales with spirograph patterns milled into them. That's the picture we have there. Right. But, but there's like two or three more versions of right. that handle. Uh, one with a channel cut down the center, one in plain titanium oh, it, right. with exaggerated chamfering. That sounds cool. That sounds pretty right. cool. Yeah, the one that I've got on the way is just got the single cut down the middle of it. Okay. Kind of like, uh, yeah, right, like a fuller except in the handle. <laughs> right. Right, and I don't know if it's a cupped cut or a V-cut yet. So what what is your relationship with them, if you don't mind my asking? Uh, I do some customer service work for them whenever it comes to actually working on a knife and they have something that's actually broken. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I do facilitate speaking with customers whenever it, there's a language problem, which there isn't very often anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, the people that are uh, Angel and some of the other girls that are doing the stuff over there have really sharpened up on their English. So it's I don't do much of that anymore. But. Okay. And uh, whenever it comes to knives they don't have names for or knives that they want to put a name on, I kind of do the the back checking on the names. Okay. I either give it a name or back check a name so that we don't have uh, problems with, well, if you remember several years ago, Esquire magazine tried to sue Buck over the Buck Esquire. Oh, Jesus. Really? Yeah, they did. That's why the uh, the smaller buck, it's like a two and a half inch blade or smaller, is a, a squire, not an esquire. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, interesting. Like esquire was was never used. Like that word was never used before that magazine. It's a little right. ridiculous. But uh, Ed, Edwin says he does not like the look, the look of it. Um, yeah, that, I saw that. But, yeah. you know, each to their own, you know. Yeah. That's the one with the the wheel pivot. No, 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 no. Uh, this is the one. It's uh. Can you put it put it back up, Jen? It's a simple uh little titanium. I say little, three point two five <laughs> inch uh titanium EDC, uh, and it's going to come in a variety of handles. This one is a 
a milled spirograph pattern. It's got a couple of different anodizations at bronze and blue. And then it's going to come with a with with a handle that has a fuller carved into it. And then it's going to have a plain titanium. Oh, and also carbon fiber, of course. Can't can't do anything without carbon fiber. Oh, yes. Got to have the carbon fiber for everybody. You know, uh, for me personally, unless it's marbled or some weird pattern, ugh, I don't, I don't want to see it anymore. I just don't want to see it. I know it's a great uh, superior material in terms of lightness and, and rigidity and toughness and all that. But Well, the thing, thing with carbon fiber is, like, take the uh, malware, for instance. It shaves nearly an entire ounce off the knife uh, for what is not a lot more money anymore. It mm -hmm. used to be, but now it's uh, you know, not too much different from machining or dealing with titanium. Uh, I have a malware right here with titanium. Uh huh. And it's super light. I yes. don't need. I don't need no stinking carbon fiber on my. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, when you held up yours, the carbon fiber it looks quite beautiful. Yeah. The. Yeah. Yeah. That looks pretty classy. Kind of like uh, my one of the few carbon fiber. Knives I have left. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a beautiful knife. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, that, I think nice this carbon. knife, though, gets into what we're going to talk about later. Okay. How so? Uh, right, well. I, th uh, I think we're going to talk about weapons versus. Yes. Yes, we are. So I look forward to that, especially with this knife, because I have my opinions on it. And I have my design intents on it. Okay, cool. Well, well, we'll get to that. Uh, Jim, float that uh, last graphic up, please. Oh, that Civivi looks nice. I was, oh, the Riot Jack. Uh, the new Jack with the blade that comes off. What do you think of that? Uh, all point, right, yeah. so Thank I you, haven't Kurt. looked at how they have done it, but there are a group of users out there that need that type of knife even if they don't know it <laughs> the the thing is working with customer service i see this regularly people get acids and various other things down in the pivots of their knife and don't even realize it they'll have everything around the pivot all laid up and it's no i say acids i'm talking like fruit juices and stuff mm -hmm. and they wipe off the blades they wipe off the knife but doesn't matter it still eats up the internals and uh, whenever you go to this deal like Riot used, not on, I haven't seen this knife, but the previous one, that's all titanium in there. Nothing to deteriorate. It's pretty much impervious to all those fruit juices and stuff. Well, but what's the purpose of the, the blade being able to come off and all that? So that you can have titanium, nothing but titanium and ceramic in the pivot. Oh, 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 so, okay. All right. I got you. So the frame that holds the steel blade in is titanium, everything, all the hardware, everything, except for the actual cutting piece of metal that right. gets fitted. Oh, that's interesting. Now, yeah. I don't know if that was their purpose for doing that, but that's right. why I've looked into it. Huh? So someone who uses their, uh, large, uh, you know, their large nice folders to do a lot of food prep will want that they sure. may yes okay it's it's a weird it's i don't want to say weird it's a very specialized application i would say i, I don't know that it's as specialized as you might think i i see a lot of guys that buy some sort of thin long knife and then they i don't know if it's food you'd call this food prep but uh, on their bar, they're cutting uh, lemons, limes, mm -hmm. and various other citrus fruits to, for mixed drinks or whatever they're doing. Yeah. And then the next day, they or they wash the knife off the blade, but that's it. And uh, then they end up with what I was talking about earlier, the stuff inside getting all nasty. Thanks, <laughs> Alex. Thanks, it's good Alex. to have you here. But I mean, yeah, and and how cool and classy is the guy at his own bar cl cutting lemons with the with the Riat Jack 2.0? Okay, all right. So I'm coming around to it. I'm coming around to it. By the way, I bought my first Wii knife. What was it, Alex? Yeah, no kidding. And sorry, don't, guys. Don't leave me on tenter hooks. I don't know why, but I can't see the chat tonight. So oh, anyone seen the gap cutters? 
No, no. The Gavco nurse. Are you familiar with the with the blade shape of that? Is that yes, what? I'm very familiar with Mike Gavco and his. I suppose that one would be almost a sheep's foot for the nurse. Okay. Okay, and that's got the long opening hole, right? The long opening slot. Most of them do. Mike does so many different things that it's kind of hard to keep because he'll make a nurse like this or like that. or. You know. So so I think this is his second knife with Wii. He did the thresher or thrasher, thresher through um, drop. And I okay. think Wii, Wii and manufactured. I, I want to make a clarification there. I appreciate you letting us know about that, Patty. But that is not a wee knife. That is a mass drop knife. Okay. We will be manufacturing it, but it's not a wee knife. Okay, not not under their sh not under their shingle, uh, not one of their uh, branded knives, but a knife that they OEM for. Right. A lot of people we have this. Hey, Slicey. It's good to see you, sir. What's going on, man? <laughs> and you do need to get the Gladiator Slicey. You need that thing. But oh, yeah. uh, a, a lot of people have this belief that any any knives made by any of these companies, you know, right now it's Best Tech or We or uh, Riot are knives by these companies. They're not like uh, Leong Ma, for instance. All his stuff's made by Riot, but if you need customer service, you go back to Leong. Mm -hmm. okay. You don't go to Riot. Right. So something to think about. Oh yeah, well that's a great distinction to make not only uh from your perspective as a as someone who represents the Wii company but also from the perspective of the people who are trying to start their own labels, start their own uh, you know, uh, right. put out their own shingle. It, you know, yes, it's manufactured. Yes, I I chose a wonderful manufacturer, but this is my knife, this is my company and you know, deal with me and and then I'll take care of it. Oh, nice. No problem, Slicey. I got you <laughs> covered, man. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to sell it to her, I think. No. No. No, no, no. I mean, I mean I mean sell the idea. Hey, uh, Slicey, I know you're uh I know you are in a phase of uh buying big ridiculous cold steels or 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 started one. Check that out. Hmm. hmm? <laughs> uh and of course I have a way to open it up very quickly, just in case, you know because because chris so anyway there it is I, i'm going to be showing it off periodically throughout the night because it's a new symbol of my manhood uh so zero tolerance has a new knife out uh and oh boy the the zero 357 no. yes the zero 357 uh i've had some arguments with people about that one already what have you heard Okay, I, I haven't heard anything. I just see the design, and I like my eyes like what they see. Um, to me, it looks like a kind of a an update or a companion knife to the zero five six six. You know, kind of a a smaller, um, you know, more light duty. Uh, but it's it's a it's a it's a um, I I don't get the speed say thing. I I don't I can't imagine there's much of a call for it, especially in, in the relatively rarefied air of the zt uh, price range um you know okay, so so let's let's dig into this okay the, the knife's msrp is like 150 if i remember correctly or thereabouts okay. so that means it's actually going to sell for 100 to 120 bucks mm -hmm. uh if you are kai industries which owns zt and kershaw and such uh you have hundreds of thousands of customers that have been using Kershaw speed safe knives. Uh -huh. And you want to bring those customers into ZT. So this is your door to get them in. This knife is not for you and me, Bob. Right. Right. And that's the argument I've been having. Yes. I mean, that's so simple and obvious now that you put it like that. Of course, that's what this knife is. Um, uh, yeah. Right, it's like a, uh, a, a, it's a bridge, it's a gateway, you know. Right, it's a gateway knife. In this, ZT. this is just like them, the same company taking their U.S. made Kershaw line, and they're putting some manual knives in the U.S. made Kershaw line. 
Right, that, right. They're cross pollinating so that, yeah. Right. They're trying to drag us back over to Kershaw. Well, what do you think of that blade shape? Oh, I like the blade shape. That's good. I do too. It's slightly reminiscent of the screamer the, or, yeah. or the screamer. However, oh, you I want to put it. Link. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's got some leak. It's got some leak. It, it looks like no, uh, no, Link. Oh, Link. The uh, Kershaw L right. L I N K from right. Uh, <laughs> Alex well, just it, thinks it looks like a Kershaw. It does, Alex. <laughs> but uh, you know, it mm. is. It's just wow. a Kershaw made here in the states. It's going to come out of the same factory that the U.S. made Kershaws and ZTs come out of. Well, if you look at it, I, I'm just. It looks like a zero zero nine five. What is that? I'm I'm trying to remember what that is, but I look at this and actually, uh, uh, to me, it looks like a uh, a perfect spear blade with uh, the grinds kind of obscure it a little bit uh, with that, uh, and then there's that swale for the finger. But you look at the at the butt, the butt end looks perfect. You know, including the jimping, it looks perfect for capping with your thumb. It does look like a great little fighting knife or tactical knife, you know. Um, and, and, and it, if, if it were larger, I'm glad it's not, let me put it that way. I'm glad it's not larger because if it were, I would be tempted to buy it because I just like the design. I just think it's the lines just speak to me. Oh, it's got nice lines. Now I have to ask where you're at over there on uh, that particular section of the East coast. Mm -hmm. How do the laws treat you on the uh, speed safe system? Laws. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Uh, they uh, uh, speed safe is fine. Switchblades are illegal, illegal, but uh, speed safe is fine. You can go to your Dick's or your or your Home Depot or whatever and buy a speed safe. Um, okay, but uh, you add a button to that whole thing, and oh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty rough, huh? Hey, what's up, OCD? <laughs> Good hey. to see you, sir. I like your yeah, I like your logo. Um, so. Uh, I, I like, I like, uh, let's see, ZT getting back to ZT style in lines. Well, that's definitely sure with the 308. How do you like this new three series with the, with the, with the calibers? You know, you got your 357, you got your 308. Have you seen hefted, used, felt the, the 308? No, I haven't. Any opinions uh, on that knife? I, I'd have to look and see which one that one is. Oh, that's the new one that came out this year with the big broad blade. Oh, kind of the cut one out near the pivot. Funny pivot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the funny pivot. I mean, uh, whenever you go out, and uh, anyhow, <laughs> uh, we'll get off the rails here on that because we don't need to be talking about the barnyard. Got you, got you. Well, it, it, this kind of looks like it's in the same same stable, and uh, I like it, but I won't be getting it. But 20 CV steel on a knife that's probably going to be down, you know, in 100, the 120 range is uh, pretty good. They're yeah. going the right direction, but not there yet. And I, I agree with Alex there. I would like to see ZT get back to what ZT does best, which are big, burly, heavy knives. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would like to see them do is be a wee bit more con conscious of the grinds and, of course, the heat treat. They seem to have problems with that. But uh, not having, you know, 30 thousandths before they start to put an edge on it. So what about the heat treat? I know a while back they had some LMAX issues when they first introduced LMAX uh, with the uh, 800, 808 or whatever it was, the Rexford. What's, what's new on that front? I don't know that there's anything new. It's just been a history with them. Whenever mm -hmm. they get a new steel, they have... The first run has got some heat treat issues. Haven't seen that with the 20 CV though. So, mm, okay. You know, maybe they're following the instructions like they're supposed to now. <laughs> Someone's reading the instructions. I never do that. I, I stab around until I, I finally get it. Well, you know, we do all this fussing around about heat treats. Every one of these steel companies puts out an instruction sheet. <laughs> and if you follow the instruction sheet, it all works. So uh, Spirited Whiskey says, why have CPM 154 and RWL 34 fallen out of favor for production companies? Um, I personally love 154 uh, CM or CPM. Uh, the reason they've fallen out of favor is S35VN's gotten cheap. 
So uh, it is S thirty five VN a much much better performer than CPM one fifty four. It's perceived to be perceived to be in your opinion. Uh, in my opinion, I would take the S thirty five VN. Okay. It won't hold an edge quite as long as CPM one fifty four, but whenever I go back to run to uh, put a new edge on it or put a new micro bevel on it, it's four or five swipes on the sharp maker and off I go. Oh, nice. Okay. So it's that's just the you know whenever you're talking a few days difference, that's can be important. Yeah, definitely. And S and S thirty five doesn't stain as easily. Ah. Uh -huh. So, see, you, you've experienced staining on 154 CM. Or oh, yeah. CPM. Uh, Patty's, Patty mentions the, the 450. Here's the oh. 452. I love this knife. Yeah, that's the, that is a 452, the big one? Yeah. Okay, never mind. I don't have to get one. Okay. That, that is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, the smaller one that Patty likes, I don't care for. It's, I don't know. There's something I don't care so much about there weird weird in the hand to you or yeah a little weird in the hand and uh mm. I, I think i don't know it just doesn't seem to work the way i want it to be in that size too thin i think across the uh handle oh, right right uh, sinkovich is one of my favorite uh designers i i love his designs some of uh, some of them like like this are so graceful and beautiful and then some of them are 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 are, are blunted and like uh, there's that one zt by him that's that's kind of blocky it's really weird it's like the opposite of this but he wait do you have it no oh, okay. that's a 452 gotcha. this is just a well used and abused 452 nice yeah anyway his the range of his designs are are, are uh, really broad hey dave good to see you sir yeah yeah this the the 452 and it's the right size i mean it's just a little bit over four i mean if you're up at four anyway you may as well go a little bit a little bit longer uh spirited whiskey i prefer the s35 vn family uh m390 and can get too hard and brittle l max is better but there's not enough people that have really learned how to heat treat l max because hmm. of because it fell out of favor so quickly Really, it fell out of because it's still you're still finding it places though. I mean, people are still putting it on knives, right? Oh yeah, but you're not. You know, you can't just run down to the store and buy a ZT and L Max or a Spider Co and L Max or okay. Uh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> no, Patty, I didn't. <laughs> you, you got man hands. <laughs> Uh, 454. Uh, wait, someone just put up that they bought the 470 and the four. See, the numbers start to get to me. I, I can't remember. Yeah, I, you know, the, oh. this, this is the Wii problem. And the reason that I named some of their knives, because mm -hmm. the first year I did anything with them, I was like, oh, this numbering thing has got to go. Yeah. Uh, and we got to have names. They can it's be bad names. That They just need a name. Especially when you put out a lot of knives, we seems to put out a lot of knives. Yeah, you know, and 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 if they're all numbers, yeah, that's. I mean, it it takes a certain kind of mind to keep track of that kind of thing, right? So four sixty and four seventy don't have any clue what those are. Uh oh, wait, four sixty and four seventy uh, are probably the Sinkoviches I'm talking about. Probably so, because it's oh four. And and I think Sinkovich designs are the 04, 0460, and 0470. All right. I think a light bulb just came on. And someone out there is saying, yes, dumbass, you got it. All right. So there's uh, – okay, so I had a, a, a nice long conversation with Ernest Emerson today, which was oh. awesome. And, and uh, a, a guy I've been wanting to interview for a long time. And, uh, and right after – well, you know – during the afternoon after this interview, uh, I, I go to his page. Actually, I didn't go to his page. I went to his page after Edwin uh, sent me a uh, uh, Edwin, who's been who's been commenting, sent me a message on Instagram 
telling me to check out the Emerson page of this new knife that he's coming out with called the Elvia. <coughs> and it's interesting, not only in how it looks, uh, but in its origin story. He's, he's uh, uh, a man named Ed Calderon, who was actually just recently on the Joe Rogan podcast, did a fascinating podcast. Uh, he's, an, he's a counter narco agent uh, who was working in Mexico and um, always carried as backup. His, his backup backup weapon was a, uh, a knife that his mother used to carry and used for kitchen tasks, utility tasks, but also used it to save the family from a, uh, someone who was attacking them uh, on the street. And so he always kept that knife on him and he approached Ernest Emerson and asked him if he would be willing to make a folding version of it. And, uh, and he did. And it's a very unique uh, looking thing. It looks it, uh, kind of like a Pical knife. Um, oh, okay. Uh, it, but, you know, it comes out of the handle uh, in the, it doesn't, it looks like a Pical knife. I think yeah, yeah. in reverse grip, you would have your finger in that, in the, uh, in the choil towards the end. And, but also in forward grip, it's got that uh, it's got that little thing holding your finger on there. Well, anyway, when I look at this knife, what I see is a woman holding that in her hand and and turning a piece of fruit or a, or peeling an onion or something. You know, it's that kind of knife, right? Where, um, so it's just a, a cool design to me to see um, something that was uh, a, a a no doubt super inexpensive, uh, you know knife that could have been around for years and years and years in that family uh being immortalized into you know a folding a modern folding knife i just think it's a cool 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 idea and a oh, really yes. cool looking knife and edwin who's got a, a collection of 130 emersons is is salivating over that yeah <laughs> i bet gotta have them all <laughs> exactly each one <laughs> finally says krav yeah so uh yeah, that hand pairing knife thing. It's a cool idea. So uh, I also saw on Knife News that uh, uh, Spider-Co Amsterdam meet is canceled due to coronavirus. And uh, also their, their big giant outdoor show, the big uh, European outdoor uh, classics, uh, IWA. That's yeah, being Iowa. Fun. Iowa, yeah. So uh, this is making me very nervous about Blade Show, I got to say. Uh, we're Americans. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Cool. That's kind of what I was thinking. We were all just gonna kind of uh, 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 just forge ahead, right? Yeah, we're gonna all go gather up, get drunk, get sick, all the same. <laughs> you know, it it it's just the same stuff that happens every year. It's just gonna have a different name, you know. Yeah, I've I've heard N one H one. I've heard SARS. I've heard swine flu. I've heard pig flu. There have been a lot of flus in the last uh, uh, you know bunch of years. Uh, yes, it is a vicious looking thing. And, and it also looks like it might be somewhat specialized, but at the same time, it was a utility knife. So, so, uh, I, I, I will give it a chance. It looks like an a 100 karambit. Uh, that's what I was kind of thinking whenever you were talking about it, it, it has that look of being a karambit without the advantage of the hole on the end of it. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, well, it definitely looks like it's to be held in the opposite orientation. It looks like an edge in fighting, you know, Pakal style fighting thing when it's in reverse right. grip. Uh, it looks like in forward grip reminds me a bit of a Spidey Pakal. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And and uh, in in forward grip, it looks like it would definitely work. It doesn't look like the most ergonomic thing in forward grip, but uh, looks like a knife with a broken stop pin. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it does that too. <laughs> it's it's a little it's a little arresting actually at first. H one N one was the worst of them. Sorry, did I butcher it? I'm I'm sure I did. Yeah, it's it's all the same. I mean, there's a whole lot of fuss about it, and I understand, but it's another flu virus, and there's nothing we can really do about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess reality is out there printing what thousands of uh, things to hold the masks on for the people over in China and, and other community things that are happening like that, but they wear the masks anyhow, most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Cause the, the air is bad. Right. Yeah. Well, 
you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully Blade shows a go because this is my first year. And as you heard, my voice just cracked. Uh, I'm a little nervous. Um, I'll be okay. Okay. All right. Great. Well, the the thing that now I'm sweating, I'm like, wait a second. You know, I've been so busy, uh, like a quiet, you know, buying knives from you and others <laughs> that uh, I haven't been thinking about uh, saving up money for Blade Show and buying knives at Blade Show, which is obviously something I'm going to want to do. Yeah. Be careful with that. You end up with, yeah, it's scary. So either, either I, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking my strategy needs to be, I either go and, and I'm, I'm totally ascetic about it. And I say nothing. I am not buying a knife. I'm not buying, you know, this year I'm not buying anything. It's just going for, or, or maybe give myself a one knife limit and give myself a monetary limit. Uh, because it, I could see going overboard like immediately or very quickly. Oh, it would be easy. Absolutely. Because there's going to be so much there. And especially if you like things that are hard to get a hold of, because mm -hmm. it's going to be there. <laughs> I don't know who Philip Seymour Hoffman is at all. What? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I, that, I think I'm watching the yeah, uh, well, you know what, man? We can go with that. Yeah, let's let's do let's do. Uh, I, I uh, luckily my tastes. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mad cow deceased. All right. <laughs> hey, uh, I got a question for you. Um, uh, is a cow that doesn't produce milk a milk dud or an utter failure? Uh, I don't know. I think that's in the eyes of the beholder. All right. <laughs> there you go. It's my dad joke for the night. <laughs> even even my my kids don't laugh at that. Uh but what I was what I was saying is luckily I feel like my uh, my tastes are beginning to uh oh there you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow, actually in the in the in the yeah. Well, I I could see it a little bit, but he's got the puffy kind of been drinking a lot look that you don't have. Um yeah. Yeah. That's so, all right. Luckily, and I do a better job of trimming my eyebrows. <laughs> luckily, my my tastes are 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 becoming such that I won't be tempted by a lot of things that I see, uh, things with bright colors and uh, lots of anodizing and uh, stuff like that. You know, I I really appreciate it and I think it's uh, beautiful, um, but I tend not to carry it, so I've been getting getting rid of that kind of stuff. I absolutely I, understand. Yeah. So, so I'm going to be, you know, and, 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 uh, um, you know, nothing too fanciful. And, uh, I, you know, I know what I like now. And, and it, sometimes it takes a while to really figure that out. You got to, you got to go through a bunch of knives and you have to try things out. And, uh, things that look great on paper or on the screen, you get them in hand. And you're like, I didn't need to buy this. I could have just looked at it. Well, you know, I'm the guy that has made, Tie mascus, Damascus. I haven't dealt with the stainless Damascus. I guess I kind of have. I've done some Vegas Damascus or Vegas Forge uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, pattern welded steel. And I don't have a single one that I have here because I don't care for them. Mm -hmm. what, what, is it too busy to you visually or what? What? why not? Uh, no, it, it's a performance thing. No. Uh, if I'm going to make myself a knife, it's going to be to use it. And, I got you. And if I'm going to use it, it's uh, it's going to be made out of O1, A2, one of the stainlesses. Uh, I'm I'm not going to make it out of Damascus. I right. I have one handmade Damascus guy made by a guy up in Wisconsin, and that's the only art knife of that sort that I have. Right. Yeah. I, I, uh, I kvetch a lot about, uh, Mr. Furley issues, you know, like you got the pattern Damascus next to the pattern, you know, Mokutai bolster next to the, this next to the, uh, carbon fiber. And, uh, it, it, it's, it's too much. And I say that, but sometimes I can go for it. Like, like when one of the materials is natural, like, um, like, uh, uh, uh mammoth ivory, you know, mammoth ivory next to something swirly, uh, I can do that. But, 
but in in general those those knives that are just really dazzling with pattern next to pattern next to pattern to me it's it's kind of like you don't dress like that it seems like the knife you each one of those patterns is beautiful and unique in and of itself and deserves to be highlighted on this knife so this knife will have you know a relatively plain handle but it will have this beautiful Damascus blade, or it will have a relatively plain blade, but this beautiful Timascus boulder, uh, bolster. And, and Charles is right there. Uh, if if you're going to be out in the field for like weeks, Damas Damascus is great because it will turn into a saw. Right. But, right. Uh, other than that, a good uh, stainless is better anytime. Huh? Yeah. 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 You know what? That's funny. I, I, uh, my, I don't have any Damascus, uh, uh, but but one indication of that uh, that made it in, that it, that fact intuitive to me, or that thought intuitive to me, was that you never, you rarely find out what steels are in it. He'll just say this this pattern Damascus or that pattern Damascus. So how are you supposed to know, uh, you know, that it's not just beautiful looking? You know, how how are you supposed to know that it's. Uh, Right, or you get the standard, which is 1084 and 15 and 20. So I want 1084 in my I'm going to use it every day knife. Uh, you know, that's kind of like saying not or was 8CR13 MOV is just fine for all my knives. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's so, okay, so it just comes back to it's an aesthetic thing. And I'm a shallow aesthete, I'll admit it. Thanks. For Have a good night, Patty. Take care, Patty. Always good to have you, man. Um, so yeah, uh, to, to me, so much, uh, so much comes down to looks frequently. Uh, but, but part of that appreciation is knowing that, you know, someday, someday that task will come and I'll, I really will need to use this knife and knowing that it will perform is, uh, you know, is, is part of the joy now. Uh, I want to ask you, okay. Uh, I'm from near Ozark, but not Ozark itself. And uh, something I was going to say about your time, Mascus, I will at some point have handbags designed with Timascus stuff all over them. Ooh, that sounds like it will, like, the, you mean the hardware, like the rings that hold the straps on? Oh, yeah, the... all that stuff. Oh, dude, Because yeah. that's where I felt like, whenever the first time I saw Timascus, that's where I felt like it belonged. <laughs> that's funny. So I, I okay, will okay. eventually make this happen. Okay, it's a diss, but it's also a great idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a tactic versus strategy thing. Ah, that's an interesting, yeah. So w one of the things we're going to talk about, or one of the things I'd like to talk about before, you know, before we wrap tonight is the concept of uh, EDC versus weapon. And you said you wanted to, you wanted to talk about that, this in particular. Uh, okay. But uh, hang on, but before you do, I, I want to say um, a couple of companies like uh, Cold Steel and Emerson and a few others are unabashed about uh, the fact that they uh, produce weapons. They design and produce weapons and that the utility, EDC utility of them, most of their models uh, is secondary to their weaponness. Um Okay, so that being said, and I have appreciation for both. That being said, sir. Okay, well, whenever you go into a design, you have design intent, of course, and you take the, where did mine go? Well, here's another one. You have the, the malware. The design intent here was not specifically to have a weapon, but whenever you start getting to the, uh, the finer points, how long is the blade going to be? You know, what kind of... Uh, distal taper is it going to have how pointy is it going to be how is it going to sit in the hand once you've got it comfortable you tweak those things to where you have a, a knife that can be used in several different methods to uh, do damage if needed mm -hmm. and especially blade length that's something that I, I think a lot of people miss and don't understand why one of the possible reasons for blade links averaging about three and a quarter to about four inches. If, if you have a stabbing weapon, mm -hmm. it needs to be longer than three inches to be effective. You uh, mean to reach vitals? So yes. To speak? Yes. Okay. And 
you know, that's one reason we didn't make a tiny malware. We could have. Right. But that's right. why it's like a 3.8 or so inch blade. Uh, this knife. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this knife definitely has. Uh, 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 oh, to me, it's very weapony. I know it's a uh, it's a it's a utility blade and, and all that. But, yeah, the length of it, but also the 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 way it the way it nestles in the hand. Absolutely. Um, it's all uh, about self-defense. I agree. Every blade we design, with the exception of uh, this little guy, the Roxy. Mm. Yeah. And, and this was just so you could have the coolest freaking box cutter on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the rest of them, we have not designed a blade that doesn't address needing to use it to defend yourself. Mm-hmm. This, uh, the, the Roxy for it, you know, the, the Roxy one didn't need to be because the Roxy one has the big brother. So, um, yeah, but, right. but this, uh, that shape, you know, if you had to push it into something just, Absolutely. you know, grows ever wider, uh, you know, with, so anyway. And, and I, I think that a lot of designers think about those things. Very few of them are going to talk about them. I will. I'm not. Mm -hmm scared to talk about it but and then you have the art guys who are completely separate mm -hmm. you know uh the the french guy that i can't uh, he did uh, several knives here in the past few years oh uh, um uh the guy who made the fifth fifth 20 and the no, uh, no Philippe no. Georges or oh uh um, oh david I, respect or no, I can't remember That's his good. name right now. I'll have to think about it. But yeah, you know, all his knives are art, and he'll tell you that. Right, right. Uh, and then there's the other side. When and whenever you get to the EDC, there are some very explicit EDC knives, like Griptilian. That's yep. an EDC knife. Yep. But uh, a lot of them, I really think, are try uh, try to at least address being able to use it to defend defend yourself to some extent. Yep. Yep. And like Charles says here, uh, a lot of people on YouTube aren't going to really talk about knives as weapons, uh, but you know, as for image control, but for him, he carries them in case he needs to stab a fool. And uh, that is a, uh, a totally legitimate reason to carry anything. Uh, oh, absolutely. Really I mean, I carry other devices to take care of myself, but if I need to use the knife, I'll use the knife. Yeah. Jim, there was another comment up a couple of comments ago. Um, I'm not sure if I, I, I missed, but, uh, yeah. Um, you know, I, as I mentioned before, I was talking to, um, uh, Ernest Emerson today and he's, you know, he's one of those unabashed. Yes. I, I make weapons. I'm a fighter. That's what I do. And that's what informs my knives. And, and, you know, uh, that's, that's his thing. And, uh, you know, I realized, well, I I've known this all along, but it's nice to have people, uh, who who know what their wheelhouse is? EDC does equal self defense. Oh, uh, Edwin Edwin had something up there saying that his primary knife is always for self defense, and that's that's how I feel. And then I carry the nice uh, where where is my little? Uh, then I carry this kind of thing, you know, as my as my backup for cutting sandwiches and stuff or whatever. Okay. Beautiful little. We got to talk to you about those non-locking knives. Yeah, yeah. Well, can you make me a a, a locking non a, a locking slip joint? No, I can't because it <laughs> wouldn't be a slip joint. <laughs> Why? So, so not at all. You don't go in for the grandpa knife at all. Uh, the only slip joint or non-locking knife that I carry is a fifty-eight millimeter Swiss Army knife. Okay, and right. I don't ever use the blade on it. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's right. Your, your philosophy is if it can have a lock, why would you, why would you not have it? Absolutely. I mean, it's just, and it's not to make it a fixed blade. It's just because it's safer for you. Right. Oh, wait, uh, put that yeah, back. Up. We lost that one. Yeah. See, uh, the GNG deadlock is the pinnacle of out the front and it's absolutely amazing. Yes. Uh, I, I've, well, I've never held one, but I've heard it described. <laughs> it seems awesome. I have uh, messed with one from them and yep. it is uh, something to behold. 
Yeah. It's uh, whenever he handed it to me, he's like, here, check this one out. And I had never heard of it. Mm-hmm. They, it was before they started making them. And I was like, and I flicked it out and I'm like, Hey, works great. He's like, no mess with the blade. And I'm like, Oh wow. Um, there's no play. Wow. Yeah. 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 I, I'm pretty sure I need a deadlock in my life too. I need a deadlock and an, and an arch nemesis in my life. Post haste. Bring me those sweet and rare folding daggers and, and I'll yeah. be a happy man. And, and I'm with Charles there. I love to look at some of the older knives and s- the intricate designs <laughs> that some of these guys do Yeah, that are just beautiful. But I can't bring myself to buy them because I'm never going to use it. Okay, I, I was about to, you know what, it, I was about to do that thing that people who like nuts do if you don't like nuts. Well, what about cashews? Well, what about almonds? Those are the best. Well, what about, <laughs> uh, so I was going to list a bunch of tasks that you might use this for. But instead of doing that, I will tell you what I use it for. First of okay. all, it is it is a bit of, um, I, I must admit, it is a bit of sentimentalism. I, I, I am Italian. We are prone to sentimentality. And and to me, they they remind me of a, of a bygone era that sometimes uh, I've uh, that I romanticize, I, I should say, but also reminds me of my grandfather, right? Uh, but I love uh, on these, um, this is a, a, a whatchamacallit, a, a GEC. Uh, I love having carbon steel blades. I love the patina. I love using them for um, food things. And I'm not much of a food prep guy uh, with folding knives. I think that's a little weird. I think we all have kitchen knives for that purpose. But if I'm, you know, wh- when I'm at work or if I'm with my my kids and we're out or in the woods or something, um, I like to use these to cut, you know, apples and stuff like that. To me, it's it's a pleasing pleasing experience. It's part of the experience to use the thing because it's like, I don't know, maybe it maybe it puts me in touch with a past that I romanticize. There, I said it. <laughs> well, it's probably my Scottish practical heritage that says just don't even mess with it. <laughs> you cheap bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, don't take away my slip joints. I might cry. But also uh, it gives you an opportunity to use these cool little leather slip cases where you can put your pens and your and your flashlights. But you know what I do? I, I get to work. I take it out of my pocket. I can't stand it. It's too heavy and big. I <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I know how that goes. Now, that's something I did get, and I don't have it in here with me, but I got a Microtech siphon. Talking siphon. about pins. That's the pin that's got the little... Oh, yeah. How is that? Uh, it's an awful pin to put in your shirt pocket, but uh, to stick... It, the one I ended up with is stainless steel, so okay. you can use it for whatever. Right. Uh, but to stick it in just your pants pocket works great. Uh, it is kind of heavy, but I generally have heavy things in my pocket anyhow. So, so it, 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 it's not an actual siphon, right? Like you, you pull that lever up and it pushes a, a pen cartridge down. Right. Okay. Right. It's not a fountain pen in other words. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. And, but I, I will look at it next time we do this. I'll remember to bring it out. I'd love but. to see it. I'm, I'm starting to geek out on, on, on pens too if you're a fan of daggers the kershaw launch eight is an awesome little auto dagger for about eighty dollars it's super light uh, three and a half cpm 154 and super stab I'm trying to remember what the eight looks like the eight oh oh that, that yeah the it's the matt diskin design sort of uh uh nouveau uh italian stiletto switchblade in there in their thing uh i i have one it's not here with me but I have one of the Kershaw switchblades, and it's, I should say, automatic. Uh, and it's the Launch 9, and it's this tiny, it's it's less than <laughs> two inches, and it's so cute and cool and robust. It's this, yeah. I mean, it fires out like crazy. Yeah. The, the Cali Legal switchblade. Is that uh, ProTech? No, no, the, the little bitty... I believe that little bitty oh, Kershaw yes, that is, you have is Cali legal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah Cal- made to be Cali legal. Yeah. Slip joints will always be special, special to me, but I need my trusty locking knife. Well, that's for sure. Exactly. I mean, e- even in my most, uh, uh, I have the 
Gitano, the new lion steel Gitano. It looks like a, a small um, Spanish Navaja. And mm -hmm. it's, I, I just wish they would make a slightly larger, slightly more locking version of it because it is so, it's such a bad design, bad meaning good. And it's such a beautiful design. Well, and, the, the thing is, why didn't they just make two versions of it and one of them have a liner lock? Thank you. Why didn't they ask you or me? It's true. Or a backlock. I don't care. Backlock would keep it thin oh. in the same dimensions, you know, basically. And, uh, and a backlock would be cool. I, I wish there were more backlocks out there. I do, you know, the cold steel backlock. I mean, obviously, it's the triad and it's all that. But aside from that, just just this one-handed nature of their of their locks is awesome. And 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 in all of the, I'd say last um, six or seven years, all of their their backlocks, you can just flick open with your thumb like a spider co, basically. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, Backlocks are, are pretty sweet, and and you can you know if, if fidgeting is your thing, it's possible to fidget with certain backlocks. Might not be as enjoyable, but uh, there you have it. It's true. Can we talk about how so many people hate on OTFs? And I'd love to hear both of your opinions on them. Funny um, you should ask. I have one right here. Okay. Yeah, I, I've got like three Microtechs over there in the cabinet, so I can't hate on OTFs. The only thing I can fuss about is I have to send them back to Microtech every couple of years. Uh, I, I, why would someone hate on a? I mean, what or what's the going? Uh, what's the going? Um, I have criti no idea. criticism by knife guys. I guess maybe people who can't tolerate. You know, there's a little bit of. I mean, that's just uh, tiny, tiny little bit of machine stuff in there. I guess. Yeah, there's. I've heard people complain about the fact that they don't lock up solidly like the deadbolt does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whatever. You know, it's an OTF. Yeah. And and chances are, uh, you know, it's... Well, I uh, I should I should put it this way. With the Microtex, I've seen... Uh, there's a guy on YouTube that I follow, and his name now escapes me. Um, cool guy. He tests guns and a lot of other stuff, but... Uh, he has a special relationship with Microtech, it seems. And uh, he's done a lot of stuff where he'll take an Ultratech. Uh, this is the, the standard Ultratech, something like this, and pound it through, you know, two by fours and do oh, all yeah. sorts of stress testing with them. And these things, you know, run over, run them over with cars, put them in mud puddles, and they still, they still will work. Um, now, granted, yeah. they are fussy. They, they can get fussy, I learned with my... Uh, Troodon purchase, uh, secondary market Troodon purchase came all buzzy and ringy and and yeah, uh, I've got UTX 85s, mm -hmm. Ultratex, and a uh, couple of UTX 70s. What I've learned with the Microtex is if you do carry them every day after about um, somewhere around 24 months, you're going to have to send them back to Microtech. Wow. Because they just need to cut. There's enough lint has gotten in there well, or whatever it is. No, there's something else. And I really don't know what it is because I've had one of the UTX 85s apart, got all the lint out of it. And still, I don't know if it's a spring has gotten unspringy or what, but uh, doesn't work like it should. Uh, good customer service. At my oh, yeah. Cool. Not a problem. Let them know you're sending it in. Send it in. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I love, uh, I also have a, a SOCOM Elite. That is a cool knife. Mm -hmm. It's an it's an older one from 2012, I believe, and it's the Tanto, the, one, of the, one of the coolest design Tantos of all time, if you ask me. Uh, the, uh, I love my Heretic and Guardian Tactical out the fronts. Yeah, uh, I, Heretic, is that, uh, is that Marfioni's son? Is that uh, Anthony Marfioni's son's company, Heretic? I believe so, yeah. Okay, and then Guardian Tactical, they have some pretty sweet looking uh, out the fronts. I just get a lot of hate. I feel they rock. Do people just hate them because they can't own them? Probably, I would imagine probably. And and the other thing I was going to suggest is that some people are so anal they just cannot take that. You yeah, know, and knowing that there's a little blade play. And even in the knife community, because I, I remember doing the videos on the. Microtex. There are people that are just 
scared of them. Oh, really? Even even in even, the knife community? Even in the knife community, there are people that are just plain scared of them. All right, if uh, you go back, I've got a, I think it was a video on the UTX-85. People telling me that they were going to go off in my pocket and all these other things. So just, just like how guns jump out of holsters and start shooting people. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's a real problem. Yeah, I, I have to keep that forty-five locked up over there. It's, <laughs> it, Otherwise, it, it's just got this attitude, man. <laughs> so, uh, uh, do you have any fixed blades? Do you have a fixed blade thing at all? Uh, I don't. I have designed a few because of uh, irritation about a, no a non-availability of things that I want. What do you want? I want a fixed blade I can stick in my back pocket. That covers itself, holds itself in my back pocket, hmm. and is quick and easy to is quick and easy to use as a folder, without having to have it on my belt or attached to me outside, you know, right. outside okay. of a pocket. Right, and not not fixed yet. Okay, so um, it's in your back pocket. Is it visible to the rest of the world, or is it? Does it hide all the way in your back pocket? The top of the handle on the ones I've designed would be visible, but you have to do that because people want to put lanyards on them. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, I would. Uh, but uh, so can this can this knife be worn in the front? It could if you wanted it. Okay, okay. Well, I like that idea. I like the idea of uh, fixed blade EDCs. Um, I have. Well, it's not here. I I have one that I made uh, that is um it's a little bit you know it's it's a it's a almost five inch blade uh, but it's got a small handle and it's a bowie and it, and you can easily stash it on your person uh ooh, what do we have there this is one of the prototypes mm -hmm. i like that and that one has actually been in use for nearly a year i think uh oh one steel but uh so if I put one in production, it'll be smaller. This one was handmade here in the shop. What aspect would be smaller? The whole thing or just the handle or the handle, lighten it up, thin it out. Cause this is some pretty thick. Blade oh yeah. Stock. Yeah. It's chunky. Uh, it, I made it as a prototype and also for me, because I'm mean to things. <laughs> well, uh, Oh, Hey Stasa. Uh, Totally get it. Totally get it. No problem, buddy. I'm, I'm swimming in those same waters. Uh, I, I think uh, so. I've been on this juice fast, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my my wife my wife does them periodically, and I'm always like, I could do that. I just choose not to, and uh, so she challenged me, and and so now I'm doing it. And this is my second day without food. I've had juice though, and hey, Sky Warp, good to see you, sir. So this is my long winded way of saying I think I got to wrap it up because I. I'm uh, I'm losing energy. I'm losing energy because I haven't put okay. any in my body. Um, but before we before we go, and then this is the reason why I asked you the fixed blade uh, question. I, I want to have a little debate, a little knife fight, and it's okay. about something that might not be near and dear to your heart. So this might be a good thing uh, for debating. But uh, it's axe or hatchet versus chopper. You know, mm. chopping knives. All um, right. So, uh, which would you like to defend? I'll let you choose. Oh, I'll I'll defend the chopping knife. The chopping knife. Okay. Uh, would you like to start, or shall I? Ah, go right ahead, Bob. Okay. Well, let me just start by saying, people have been cutting wood and chopping wood, and taking care of their uh, bushcraft tasks as well as home and hearth with ask with axes uh, since time immemorial. And some people in the knife world in recent years have begun to think that it is part of their purview to just sort of walk into a time tested and, 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 and traditional uh, uh, mode of cutting wood. And they think that the knife can handle it. Well, a, a knife is an inferior tool for uh for this purpose. Uh, wood needs to be wedged apart. Therefore, it needs a large and heavy, uh, well, piece of metal on the end of a stick. 
that can be leveraged in such a way uh, to promote splitting. With a knife, when you use a knife to split wood for your firewood, you're just showing off your knife. And, and there's something about batoning that you think is um, inherently pleasing. And, um, you know, I have to say, I agree with you. There is something inherently pleasing about batoning. But there's also something inherently silly about pounding your knife through logs when you have a perfectly good ax sitting next to you. Thank you. Well, Bob, sometimes you don't have a perfectly good ax. And what are these silly hatchet things? Anyhow, it's not an ax. It's not a knife. It's somewhere in between. Sure, it has a use. But if I have a, say a competition chopper, I can cut all the wood I need to. Am I going to split wood with it? No, I'll concede that to you. That's the job of a splitting mall not the job of an ax either. <laughs> uh, but if I need to chop through something, it's nice to have something that's portable I can put on my belt. I can carry it out, chop my stuff, put it away, and walk on and not have to carry a three or four pound ax around all day. So that is the, the bit of the argument. The ax is a great tool. However, it's big, it's heavy. And it's not a splitting mall. So what truly separates it from a good chopping knife? Not much, I don't think. Ooh, I like that. That was a sort of Andy Rooney, Andy Rooney ending. That was good. That was good. And you know what? I have to say, uh, uh, I agree with you. I think you won this. Not only do I agree with you, but I'll pile on and say... Uh, it's also way more versatile, right? If you need, Absolutely. If, if you need to, you know... If you use that knife to make a spear and you kill a hog and you got to dress out that hog to survive, you're not going to want to do that with your axe. Splitting <laughs> malls are awful heavy. That is funny. Splitting mall. You, you had to pull that out on me. Okay. All right. Well, that about does it for this edition of Thursday Night Knives. Thank you so much, Zell, for coming on tonight. It's always a pleasure to to, to hang out and chat knives with you. Why does it? flex capacitor i love it i love the lighting on that thing that is actually a huge shotgun shell that i printed out i don't know several oh, months ago cool and Dude. the red one beside it is a smaller shotgun shell you, you need to make like 50 of those before christmas and man you'll make your nut right there that's that's really cool <laughs> zelric one on <laughs> yeah Beautiful. Well, actually, we've got to, and, and Jim, you got to help with this. We've got to throw Bob a bone next time. <laughs> what do you mean? Because according to the viewers, you've lost, what, four or five times in a row now? Yeah, 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 yeah. I usually, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, next time, <laughs> ne next time I'll, I'll take my win. It's like there the rats, go. the rats wrestling. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the big rats got to let the little one win every once in a while or it won't want to play. <laughs> anyway sir thanks for thanks for coming on i really appreciate it great to see you in chat knives if you haven't yet please like and subscribe and share this uh, show and the video with friends and family and uh you know, every little way like that helps in a big way women carry knives great to see you let's uh we're gonna be here again next week at 10 a uh 10 p.m it's it's juice fast time i can't think 10 p.m next week thursday night uh, women carry knives. Please join us. Uh, Absolutely, we, we would love to have you, and uh, and and get your perspective. Uh, let us. Well, that's about it for Jim behind the switcher, uh, and Zell forty two or Terrell, if you will, Terrell Todd, one half of Todd Knife and Tool. Uh, I'm Bob Demarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. Good night.